I don't even remember what I'm supposed to do, but here we go. Uh, yeah. So today, what are we? Um, we're about to talk about some things in um, Unreal Engine. I think that's our that's our shtick, right? Dan? That's the shtick. Yeah. So uh, we're, yeah. We're we're gonna make uh, animating numbers for like speed or whatever. Nice. nice I don't even know how to do that in cinema. So um, that's great. Uh, before we dive in. Don't forget, do all the YouTube social media little things, clicks and buttons, uh, the bell, the subscribe, the like, thumbs up. Um, check us out on Patreon for more behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I'll probably say it later, but add a comment, uh, things you like, things you don't, questions, whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, take it away, Dan. Show us what the goods. Sweet. So here we are. Numbers in Unreal. So like I said, this one will be uh, pretty fast, not a lot to it, but um, I find myself doing this a lot in After Effects. And if you have the need to do this in here and you want live um, numbers, they're great. So we've got our scene, we've got our numbers and all the stuffs. And we're going to make this into a blueprint so that we have some control over it. So I'll show you how to start with this. So let's. So we're going to make a new blueprint to start, and I'm going to assemble this inside the blueprint and just show you how to make controls really quickly. So I'm going to make a new blueprint class, actor, which I'm using for pretty much everything. I'm going to call it BP num animate. Why not? Okay, so I've got my blueprint editor. And I'm going to do this in two ways. So the main goal is that I'm going to make this so that I can animate it in sequencer because if I'm doing mock-ups or prototypes or I need to render out sequences in the movie render queue for design critiques or videos or whatever, that's the goal. So we're going to make this so we can do it on both and show you how that works. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to get our numbers in here. So I'm going to go to add and I'm going to search 3D text. Add that in there and look at that. There it is. So mm. to start with, I'm just going to set this to a number so I can kind of see what this looks like. And we're just going to set a few basic things. So we're going to have a bevel because I like bevels and that makes it nice and smooth. Um, I started doing this initially. This was kind of like the Mo text uh, in Cinema 4D. And I did a lot of the stuff in After Effects, but then I wanted to start trying it in 3D so they have all the options and properties of 3D. So this was a good solution to actually use different materials. So we've got our basic shape material on here. Um, let's twirl this down really quick. I'm going to add a different material to this, uh, just to the front, just so you can kind of see if you want to have different materials on the sides or the backs for whatever reason to do different things, you can do that. So for the sake of this, just to show some difference, make that metal. So I've got solid stuff on the back, metal on the front. Uh, not saying that's a, you know, we're going to do that. I don't want to look at that. But you can see how it works. Okay, so I'm going to go into the construction script first. And if you're not familiar with the construction script, this is how you can get your, your programming, your blueprints, um, all of your controls and stuff that you'd make inside of your editor window. So this is great for making tools. Um, but when you hit like play to go on runtime, or if you're using sequencer for the movie render queue, which runs on runtime, um, sequencer or a construction script bakes out as soon as you do any of that. So if we make a bunch of stuff and we animate it and I go in the viewport, as soon as you hit play and come into this mode, all of your controls now that whatever you changed are baked. Um, but um, there's a workaround for this that we're going to kind of work both ways. So I'll cover that. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to import our text. So now this is just a reference of our text object that we made here. So this is the object. We're going to reference that. And the next thing I want to do is set the text of this. So I'm going to click off here. And this will give me all the options that are um, context sensitive. So anything that's going to work with this object that we have, which is the 3D text. Set text. That's going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. So this target value, so we have set text, which is this you know function or whatever it is. It's referencing our 3D text. And in order to get this to actually work, we have to chain these nodes together. So when this 
construction script fires, if it's not connected, it won't actually read this. Um, so if you like bypassed and went to something else, you can kind of like remove it if you want to, you know, undo it. But if it's not connected, won't run. Um, and the next thing I want to do is make a variable because I want to be able to control this from the editor. Um, and this is very similar in Cinema 4D. If you like to use your own user data, you can set floats and integers and all that stuff. It's similar to that. So I like to make my own controls. And we're going to call this speed. We're going to say this is a speedometer because that's what I use this uh, for as a design project. I'm going to click this little eye icon. And what this is doing is it's exposing it. So when I come out of here, we're going to load in this blueprint. We're going to delete the old, out with the old, in with the new. So now that I've got this here, I want to make controls. So I've got our blueprint. We've got our numbers here. Um, but really, I want controls over here under the details panel. So when I come back into, I've made this accessible. I've made this visible. So now when I hit compile, Oh, it's broken because I don't have a value in here. But now when I hit compile, this is actually going to be visible. Let's see if it actually worked. It did. Default speed. It's broken. We're going to fix it. Um, but it's there. That's my favorite. Blueprint bad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's oh, wow. shaming me right now. It's like, yeah, it's like the goat thing in After Effects. It's just like a little hidden Oh, it thing. is like that. Oh, it's yeah. kind of dirty. Okay. <laughs> So this is set to a Boolean. I don't want that, but we're going to make one of those later. But really, I just want to float. So this is a number value with an infinite decimal, um, which is the most common thing that I use. I use this for most of my controls. So we're going to pull in speed, and I'm going to get speed. So I'm getting the value that I am assigning to this variable over here. So let's see. We're going to Compile this, default set to zero, that's good. So the one thing I need to do with this when I'm bringing it in is I've got this here, exposed to cinematics. I'm gonna check this on because that's going to make it when I go into sequencer, I can actually pull down and reference it. If you don't check this, it won't show up. And there's one more thing that I will, since we're working in the construction script and I wanna animate this, we're gonna go into class settings and run construct, construction script in sequencer. By checking this on and compiling, not besides it being broken, this will allow me to actually animate this like you would in an After Effects timeline or whatever. I can control and keyframe the speed and it will update in Sequencer, which is what I want. So I can kind of use this as a tool um, and go from there. So I'm just going to drag and drop this into value. And it's telling me that it's going to convert because I've got this float value and this return value text value so yeah we want text to pipe into here so now not broken so we're going to come back out into this scene and now when i scrub this value you can see that it's backwards but actually it has the decimal so you can kind of see how the float plays out into this value so i can crank this up and make it as big as i want but i want this to round down because i just want whole numbers so I'm going to go back into here. And really what I'm going to do is take this value and we're just going to round it down. So I'm going to right click just like a material I would. I'm going to take this value and we're going to send it to the floor. Um, yeah, I did the same thing. Uh, I plug that in just to do that. So now we've got this going to the floor when I compile this. Minimize it down. Now when I scrub through, I just have the values that I want. Um, it's going to drive me nuts. The one thing I want to do is make this center aligned because I don't want to stare at that. Okay. Now this functions more like I want it to. Great. So really what I want to do is I want to see this animating. I want to render out a video and show it to somebody in a presentation and say, hey, look, this speed, you know, works. Cool. So we're going to make a level sequence. We are on this guy. Name it this sequence. Okay. So let's see if we did it all right. I take my blueprint. I want to drag it down into here, and then we're going to add a track. 
So now when all these controls that I've made and I have exposed to cinematics, I have here. So speed is the only one I've made. So we're going to use speed. So now because I checked that um, box uh, rerun construction script in sequencer, this will actually work. So I can keyframe this and now this will actually animate that I want. So I can see this in editor. I can see how it works with the lighting. It's super nice. Downside with this is construction script does not run in um, the movie render queue. So when we want to send this off to render out high quality frames, it won't work. And the workaround that was hugely important and a huge pain to figure out is we're going to run this in both sides. So there may be better ways of doing this, but I have found this is a good way if you're making your own tools, you're doing a lot of iterations on stuff that you can do all of your animation and work inside of Unreal and inside of uh, the sequencer, but you can actually render it. So let's do that now. So I'm going to create a branch and I'll try to explain what it is that I'm doing as I go. Give some room. And this is going to have another variable. So I'm gonna make one more. We're gonna call this uh, final render. I don't need this in cinematics because it's just a control for the tool. I'm gonna set this to Boolean. So this is basically just an on off switch or a checkbox. So I'm gonna say get, I'm gonna compile this so that it's in here. And I want the default value to be false so that I can just keep working in sequencer. So now I'm gonna chain this up so that these events happen. So when final render, let's plug final render into here is false, we will run set text inside of the construction script. And to get this to run in a movie render queue, we're gonna copy this, go to the event graph, and we're gonna use the event tick. And the event tick is basically just telling Unreal to constantly every frame that's available to keep checking this value. So if you're making a game or you're making something in um, real time, you kind of want to be sparing with this because this can, if it's running like a hundred things or thousand things or whatever, every single frame, it'll bog your system down. So we're going to connect our event tick and we're going to hold alt and click that to get rid of that wire. And then with we're going to set this to true. So when my variable is set to true, this is ready for final render. So I compile this out. And now you can see that it's animating in here. And we'll just <clears throat> do a quick render so you can see the difference. Um, and we're going to set this to, oops, one mistake. Final render, expose to cinematics. No, that's not what I want. Visible. Visible is what I want. That will now bring it back out to where I want it out here. So let's see, we're still running, we're still animating, that's great. When I switch this to final render, now we just branched it off to the event tick. So you can see that it doesn't work in sequencer, but it will work in the movie render queue. So you'll realize quickly when you forget to check that, that it just does not animate. So movie render queue, do this real fast, bring it in. Um, I don't really want a ton of chunk on here. Whatever, ProRes is fine. And output, send it to yield desktop. I like to call that ProRes on sale. ProRes LT. Sorry, just a little dumb thing. <laughs> no, I like things on sale. Uh, <laughs> number animation. So let's just do it and see what happens. Oh, I don't have a camera. Let's just do that really quick. Because, you know, it's going to want a camera. What's this? All right. Look at that. It was gorgeous. Sequencer. We're going to add this in here. So now my cinematic is referencing a camera. Make this in focus for why not? Okay, so now we're good to go. I'm just going to file save all so everything is nice and tidy and saved. And we're going to see if it worked. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. That's it. Made a video. Nice.
uh, real quick. So is there a way to that little tick box you made um, that switches it from uh, the sequencer to uh, actually render the keyframes in the mm -hmm. the um, movie render queue? Is there a way to build that in Blueprints so that it's just doing both all the time? Or is that just going to slow your computer down? You know what I'm saying? Because you have to tick the button. Yeah, no, and that's that's a, that's a good question. So the way that Unreal is built, since it's a game engine, it's made to run in game mode. So the construction script was only... I think they built it in a way so you're not crashing your computer all the time to try to keep it optimized, but it makes all these adjustments. And then when you hit play, it just kind of commits everything and bakes it. So, yeah, there's not a great way to do it. Um, should have some stuff coming at some point about animation blueprints, which hmm. to a degree can kind of bypass some of this. Oh, I know this is a good find for you anyway, but uh, just the thought I had, it was a dumb little ignorant question. So anyway, uh, as we wrap up, that was great, Dan. Uh, quick think. little uh, movie trivia. You kept saying speed the whole time. I thought, well, first one. I thought, oh, sure, this is this has got to be Obama related on to the a bus. Drug. I don't know. What did you just say? Something about Obama? <laughs> no, Obama on the bus from Speed. Oh yeah, yeah, Keanu Reeves, baby. What year? Speed, oh, right? The movie. Nineties. We're dating ourselves now. Yeah, you're right. Old fogies of the. I looked it up. Ninety four. But I got a little trivia for the. <laughs> I feel so dumb, like a YouTuber. I'm only like a weekend. Uh, a little trivia for the uh, the the comments. What speed did they have to keep the bus at? And if if they went below a certain speed, don't That's say it, Dan. Speed. If they if they go below a certain speed, the bus will blow up. So I anyway, should, I should have set that as my number. Yeah, I, that should have been it. Missed opportunity. You could have a little, uh, a little Easter egg. Um, anyway, whatever. Great. I love that tutorial. I love uh, making things because the potential of like keyframe that uh, and just whatever is huge. So thanks for watching, everybody. Leave some com comments below. Again, if you know the, the speed of the bus on the movie Speed, made in 1994, uh, throw that in the chat. <laughs> First one to it gets a heart i don't know whatever whatever you do on social media dialogue so until next time see you later bye <laughs>